Welcome back, everyone. Sports time here on your Alaska Link. Jake Siegel alongside Casey Hintz. Casey, our final Friday night sportscast of 2017. Man, how time flies when you're covering sports around here. Jake, it certainly does. I can't believe that it's already that time, 2018, right around the corner. But that's why for our final show, we're set to reveal our top coaches, teams, player plays, games, moments, anything, you name it, we've got it. And we kick off with the coaches category. Alrighty, so many great coaches here in the state of Alaska from multiple state championships, undefeated seasons, and just overall, you know, great people in our community. But for me, my choice, well, the only, this is the only one, <laughs> not difficult for me. My coach of the year goes to Walter Love, first year at the helm of the Homer Mariner football squad, and what a year it was for them. An incredible turnaround season. Love leading his team to its best year in program history. Just one loss in the regular season and would eventually fall literally just seconds short of their first state title. I recognized the change in the program as soon as I stepped on the field during preseason, which says a lot about the teacher, coach, and person that Love is. Speaking of Love, my favorite coach is... I don't know. I definitely love this lady for sure. <laughs> it's Diamond Flags football, flag football's Kath Kathleen Navarre. From what I've seen, this coach does such a good job taking care of her players. She's like a mother to them. She's, She's all like a mother to us. That's right. This is everything we need. Right, including rosters. For any Diamond <laughs> sporting event we've ever been to, from volleyball to football, it's hard to really find a nicer person within our local sports local sports community than Kathleen. And uh, that's why she gets, you know, my coach of the year. She led Diamond to a state championship as well. So uh, good for her. Absolutely. Moving on to our favorite team, well, this year, UAA Volleyball, well, they weren't as good as last year, Casey, but they still made the playoffs and actually played without some of their heavy hitters that we're used to seeing for so many years, including Morgan Ho. So not having Morgan on the floor really made a difference, but for me, this was just a fun team to watch game in and game out, and they always seemed like they can just about win any match they set their mind to. Now, overall, head coach Chris Green returned to the playoffs for, I think, I believe it was a fifth straight season with this team. They have a lot of heart, and I don't know, Casey, there's something about them I really like covering. Hopefully they'll be back and better for 2018. Absolutely. Well, my favorite team of the year goes to the South Wolverine boys soccer team. Frequent guests on our AKSN show, two-time defending state soccer champs, and always very entertaining. Insert John H. right there. Now, the dark side defeated West Valley 6-5 in penalty kicks in back of the 2017 state title game, and they grabbed their back-to-back -back state titles. Now, South soccer... That goes my favorite team of the year. The player of the year honor doesn't really have a criteria on this one. And to, well, to, uh, no shocker to Jake, this one was very difficult for me because there were so many incredible players. So for me, it was narrowed down to who I just couldn't wait to watch game after game. So with that being said, my players of the game goes to Derek Snell, Parker Kaiser, and Brenner Furlong. Chugiak's Snell dazzled us all year long with incredible catches and unstoppable runs and touchdowns, 38 of them, in fact. Colony quarterback Parker Kaiser helping lead his team to a near-perfect regular season. He can sling it, he can run it, oh, and he's pretty good on defense as well. Finally, it is Soldatna's Brenner Furlong. Oh, how would he make it up the gut through any defense was incredible. Your 2016 Gatorade Football Player of the Year and a huge reason for Sohai's dominant offense and, of course, their sixth straight state title, oh, and uh, 59 consecutive wins. Uh, one thing to add, though, having interviewed each of them multiple times, also really great young men. Yeah, Casey, and uh, I'm going to go to the other field. My favorite player, Bubakar, Tor Bubakar Torrey of West Anchorage High School, is his full name, but all the kids called him Booba. There he is, got him coming out with his <laughs> fat head. This is video of him on senior day being honored before the start of the Chugiak game with his teammates. Not many players were in the same category and talent level that Booba had. West eventually was knocked out of the playoffs. Uh, we remember, remember that was a... That was an incredible game. Really good game. We're not there quite yet, though. He was also fun to watch, Gatorade Player of the Year. And uh, I don't know, for him, he was just an MVP, a league of his own. I, I think that's the reason why I went with Booba. So a tough choice. I didn't have three Player of the Years, but uh, Booba certainly gets uh, my vote for this Player of the Year. And now speaking of that game, lots of games to choose from, including that one that Wes lost to. But for me, Casey, I'm going to go over to the uh, baseball field because the Bucks and Miners playing for the Alaska Baseball League Championship this year, that one contest really sticks out in my mind. 
because we picked this up and it was a beautiful summer day. Hard to believe. Oh, it was, a, it was scorching out there. It was, I, I, that. I loved it. The Miners would go on to give their home fans exactly what they wanted, their second straight ABL title. Really a fun ABL year for a lot of people and for a lot of teams, and it was really awesome to see and to see the way they dominated and uh, won again. I know, uh, you know, the Miners' ownership, really nice to us every time we go yeah, out there Yeah, great as well. folks out there as well. Well, favorite game was almost unpickable, so it came down to excitement, atmosphere, and the final seconds of a contest, which was the Voice 4A State Basketball Championship game last March at the Alaska Airlines Center, featuring the Wasilla Warriors and the Diamond Lynx, a packed house, the two teams going down to the wire, exchanging free throws, and it would be Anthony Parker who would sink the final two. The Lynx would hang on to win this one. It was a thriller, 50-46. The Alaska Airlines Center, Jake, was packed. I think it was over 4,000 fans, and I just remember that, that it gave me chills, so that's why this is definitely my game of the year. Looks like standing room only there. It, was, it looked like it. All right, now uh, looks like uh, well, we're going to have our favorite moment. I think we also have a favorite play as well. But I think we're going to get to our moment first. Uh, and Casey, we kind of we're kind of all over the place with this moment thing. We have a local moment, and then I think our personal moments. Uh, absolutely, I think the moment was hard because there was a lot of uh, you know he could have was the aces. It was a little bit more of a a, a more sad moment. But uh, I think we we kept this one I think a little bit more personally for our, our personal favorite moments. That's right. We have some video here. If we can play that again uh, locally, uh, well, not really locally, right? In in, in the state, in the I state. guess. We had uh, the, the Midnight Sun game, Casey, you and I having so much fun out there in Fairbanks. Absolutely. We're going to see the Alaska Gold Panthers play. Second, the Super Bowl in Houston. We were so lucky to go to SB51. Tom Brady and the Patriots came back to stun the Falcons and the rest of the football world, beating the Atlanta Falcons. Crazy. It was <laughs> unbelievable. And moving on, the All-Star game down in Miami, Florida. A, a, a fun place for a lot of different reasons. <laughs> a lot of good times in Miami, Florida. That's right. And, and, and plus, we got to see Aaron Garrett Judge, a former Glacier pilot, win the Derby, play in the game. Uh, so that, uh, I think those were those are some pretty good moments right for us. Absolutely. A hard to pick just one. <laughs> and now moving on to our favorite play. Now, I actually don't have a favorite play, and I just want to explain this for a second. That's because the one I wanted didn't record when I was filming on the camera. I'm not joking about that. It was the West and East football game. Winner went on to play Bartlett in the championship game. Jared Harjahausen, did I say that right? You said it. That's Harjahausen, right. say that. It's a spelling bee word right there. Uh, and Jake actually didn't know how to, I actually didn't know how to say his last name for a while, so I had to get that corrected before the show started. He made a terrific catch that I had video of that didn't record. So he knows it, I know it, the people there know it, but our cameras never actually got it. That's my favorite play. <laughs> That's right. Well, let's head on over to my favorite play because mine will come to the NLC Conference title game courtesy of the MVP, Kenai Zach Tuttle. What a beauty. The give and go to himself off the post, off the head. That would make it a 3-1 game over Colony. And my second favorite part of this, though, is, of course, his celebration. Gosh, that clinched the Cards' a second consecutive region title. I don't know. I think that was an SD top tenner that I failed to submit for sure, Jake. I don't know. But it was pretty awesome, and he's hilarious to watch. So uh, that would be why mine is the play of the year. Well, it looks like that could be a resolution for 2018. Submit more S ah, SC top Absolutely. 10 plays. So, yeah. but We're going to have that opportunity. That's right. Six fantastic categories that we covered, and uh, it, was just, it was just fun covering it all. Absolutely. But we don't want to forget, uh, we, on Monday, we're actually going to have our full season review of our uh, full moments. These are just the personal moments of ours, but the actual uh, local moments that are, you know, been the greatest here in 2017. But one final note this evening, which is Jeremy Swayman suiting up earlier today for Team USA in the first ever outdoor game at the international level. The former South product, he didn't start, but he was on the bench for this historical event against Canada. This one went to a shootout, Jake, where Team USA, they would get the W4-3, the final. Pretty exciting stuff for him to be, at least be a part of that. Yeah, good stuff right there. Happy New Year, everyone. Hopefully it's safe and enjoyable.